Well, hey, how's everyone doing today? Hopefully everybody's doing great today. Someone asked me, man, how do I speed up manifesting? Manifesting fast, they were asking me that question. How do I manifest quickly, fast, speed, all that stuff? All right. Speed and speed and speed, fast, fast manifesting. Fast manifesting. Well, if you like to know how to speed up Grand Rising, everybody, if you like to speed up your manifesting or creating what you want, there's a couple things you have to do. First thing, you really got to get in, in tune or in, in that frequency of what you want. That's the first thing you got to do. The second thing you got to do, you have to believe in yourself. I mean, you have to know that you deserve what you want. You know? See how that works, man. How do you decide? Who's actual 81 asked me? How do you decide where to relocate to? What I do is I would just ask my higher self. I would look at places that I'd like and then I'll just leave it to my higher self. You got to remember, guys. There exists, there exists a part of you that is really super powerful, that knows everything before you know it and knows what's best for you. It's, it's like you, it's you yourself. It's like you're in the 3D world and this, this, this part of you, spiritual part of you, is in another dimension. But when it's up there, it can see your whole timeline, so it helps you to navigate and get things. Hey, good evening from Malaysia. Oh, so many good good people here today. Mm hmm. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Well, thank you for listening. So look, how, so what's this? Vanessa 011 asked me, okay, how do you stay in the frequency? That's a good question, yeah. So, uh, what if you have doubts? Okay, first let's go with the frequency thing. So, all right, mm, make this simple, cease, because I always like to put an analogy here. Okay, okay. Hmm. Best, I'm thinking about getting some information here where I can show you like the frequency thing and how that stuff works so you can make it easy for you to understand. All right, so here's it. Yeah. So you all have, uh, we all have like social media radio stations, right? So they have all these different stations for your likes. Whatever music you like, whatever you like, there's a jazz, rock, rock, all these different stations. And these different stations, they, they have the music, and music is what we call the frequency. Now, if you like the jazz station, what do you do? You keep your your radio just tuned to the jazz station, right? It's simple like that. Um, but when it comes to human beings, it's not going to be as simple as just tuning to the jazz station and staying on there. Because remember, human beings now, we have analytical judgmental minds we have a lot of different consciousness work working we have our subconscious in the background and we have our conscious mind doing stuff too so what you want to be what you want to understand and realize that okay your mind is going to waver from time to time your mind is going to um mess up man it's going to distract you so if you want to stay on the frequency of what you desire you have to convince the mind that it's not that important to you Hmm. Repeat that because that's important. You have to con listen. If if you if you tell your mind that something is important to you, your mind is always going to be on that thing. It's going to be thinking about it. It's going to be trying to figure out how it's going to get to you. That's what creates resistance. So if you want to stay on a frequency to get what you want, that, that means what you want can't be important to you. Now, if what is what you want can't be important to you, what does it mean? I mean, what you want has to be nothing. Let's go. Let's go even deeper than that. So, what, what is actually nothing? Nothing is actually everything. Did you catch that? Nothing is actually everything. All right, check this out. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tie this up for you so you can understand this stuff. All right, check this out. The, the universe 
I, I don't like to use the word began, but just to make sense so you can get this. So remember now, the physical world that we see right now came from where? So can someone tell me where did this physical manifestation world come from? It came from nothing. It came from smallest particles that our eyes cannot see. We, we have to make specific instruments just to detect them. We have to create mathematical formulas just to predict their awareness and where they are. So we actually cannot even see most of these particles. They're just hypothetical, theoretical things that we know, but in essence, they are nothing. So we call nothing spiritual. From spiritual creates physical. So we have what's called classical mechanics, we have Newtonian physics, or, or we call quantum mechanics. So from nothing became everything. So if you're smart, if you're really smart here and you want to manifest, you have to understand that you cannot make your desires important. They have to be like nothing to you. They just have to be there and you just have to expect that they're going to come. That way your mind don't interject and focus on it. And that focusing on the mind is what's going to create the resistance because the mind only knows one thing. I'm talking about the conscious mind. The conscious mind only knows one thing. And the one thing the conscious mind only knows is focus, try to fix, try to solve, try to figure it out. Let me repeat that. Conscious mind knows try to fix, try to solve, try to figure it out. And the mind even runs itself in its own loop. Because your, your own mind doesn't even know it's incapable of doing that stuff. So it's like a dog. you like the dog chasing its tail. So you're in this never-ending cycle that you're never going to get out of. So the secret to stay on the frequency, or basically the secret in general, man, is to just, you have to just be in a state of nothing. You just have to exist in peace, neutrality, and expectation. You just have to have this state where you're not too high, you're not too low, you're even killed. You have to be in a state where everything is like normal to you, man. The big and the small, they're all the same. There is no classes, there is no section, there is no classification, you know, there is no status. Everything just is. And once you do that, it takes you to the next level of the highest awareness of consciousness, and that is the entanglement uh, paradox. Okay? Mm hmm. So an entanglement paradox or an entanglement um, science, the science of entanglement. Let me get this question here. Rule 1452 asks, um, what to do if you have doubts while manifesting? Okay, if you have doubts while creating or manifesting something, uh, you have to keep repeatedly thinking about it so your mind gets impressed in it. That doubt is going to create a belief. That's how you create beliefs, guys, Bob. Remember, you don't believe anything instantly. You believe something because you see it over and over again in the mind and it's going to convince your subconscious that it's possible. And first of all, you have to, the biggest thing to get doubt and manifest is you have to believe it's possible and you deserve it. You know, listen, something interesting that, that I've observed about my mind and your mind as well. Anytime we meet challenges or things in our life, right? Like if, if you, all of us are going to have challenges in your life point blank you're gonna have things nothing will ever stay the same remember change is constant the only thing constant is change so there's gonna be great times and there's gonna be not so what we call great times so we'll, but it depends on a perspective right a perception I look at it but here's something to think about how your mind does this stuff whenever you have challenges the things going on the mind will tend to hold on to what you're going through and to and let you know that there ain't no hope or it can't be fixed because the mind is only seeing what's happening and the mind can't see the possibility of a solution. So while you're in the prop, your problem or the situation, the mind exasperates that more by making you believe and doubting that it will ever fix. Like if you have health problems, things going on, it's like, oh, it's the same thing. There's no improvement, there's little improvement and all that. The mind will just say to you, yeah, we're just gonna have to live with it, just da da da, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna fix, da da da. And then you get more worried, you get more stressed, and then the subconscious mind hears that, and you think about it. See what I'm showing you? So the thing you have to do, guys, when it comes to doubts, uh, these are part of the blocks from your desires, a doubt, worry, and all this fear stuff. So what you wanna do is, you wanna optimize the mind by letting the mind know that there is hope, there is possibility, there is 
a solution to it. And how do you let the mind know that there is solution, there is possibility? You let the mind know that there is solution and there's possibility by only taking the mental images of the outcome you'd like to see as a picture in an end format. Example, if you're sick, you see yourself being healthy. What did it look like before you were sick? You were healthy. If you see yourself uh, want to have money, well, what did it look like to have money? We, we, you all have imaginations. You all have ideas. You all have dreams. You all have visions. You can see what you want. There's nobody here that can't see what they want, and there's nobody here that doesn't know what they want. Everybody knows what they want. It's very simple. All you have to do is, you already know what you don't want, so all you do is reverse it, flip it, and it goes to what you do want. So everybody here, the problem we face, the problem we're facing is not you. It's not that you don't know what you want, is that you cannot make up your mind. You're indecisive. You don't. You keep changing because the mind keeps doubting. Do you see how this stuff works? Yeah, someone asked me, just share says, for healing, is it okay to just think it? For, yes, for everything, it's a it's a think, it's a thought process, because that's how you impress your 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 unconscious mind. The subconscious mind down there controls the cells in your body, man. You know what I do? Here's what I do. Cause I this I used to do this, but I don't do this anymore. Because I, I know how my mind. Whenever you whenever we're going through something. We're going to always backtrack. You're going to think, okay, why did I get that? What did I do to get that? What could cause that? How can I fix that? And then the mind's going to start going, oh, wait, Mel, maybe I need to do this. Maybe this is why it's not working. Da, 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 da. And then you start trying all these different things and you're going to be running around. So you know what I started to do? I stopped doing that because when I started to do that, I was creating more resistance every time because one thing led me to another, led me to another, led me to another. I'm all I'm like in five different rabbit holes at the same time. And there's nothing happening. So his analogy, someone said analogy, it's like, okay, it's like muddy water. Like, okay, water. So you got nice clear water. You stir the water up on the bottom, it's gonna get dirt, right? But if you leave the water, what happens? Everything settles and the water becomes clear again. So sometimes you just have to like, let it go, man. What you can't fix, you just can't fix. What you can't control, you just can't control. You change your perception of it. So that's what I learned to do. And that's becoming in that entanglement or in that flow state or in that state where you just let it go. Because what happens is you, most of the time when you just say, all right, man, listen, I can't figure this out. I'm just going to let this go. Let Whatever the universe decides, guess what happens? It fixes itself somewhere down the line. You ever thought about that? That's the same principle to create what you want. To create what you want, you gotta know it, <clears throat> you gotta expect it, and you gotta just let it go. Let, let, you gotta say to yourself, listen, this is gonna work out the best way possible for me, and I'm not gonna get involved with trying to figure out when or how or what methods I have to do, or should I try this method, or, or why is it taking so long? Because all you're gonna do is you're just gonna create resistance, you're gonna create more stress, you're gonna have more doubts, your mind's gonna start bugging you. Um, it's, I mean, the mind is so powerful, man. If you don't know <clears throat> how to take charge of your mind, your mind takes charge of you. And you don't like when your mind takes charge of you because the mind is programmed for not so good stuff. Everybody experienced this at some point in their life. Actuals81 says, I'm obsessed about moving. I don't know why I feel more comfortable in uh, rural areas. That's the next thing, guys. You don't don't become obsessed. Nothing. You should never be obsessed with anything, man. Guys, everything is nothing. There's nothing to be obsessed about. Now let's go into the entanglement uh, paradox and entanglement theory here. So we now know. Well, if you don't know now, you know. But I'll I'll broadcast it for you. Uh, we do, we now know that the universe is not here. In layman's terms. Some physicists won a Nobel Prize for that. We now know the universe is not here. What do I mean by that? Well, the universe is being broadcast. So it's, this is not the original source the universe is coming from. So if the universe is being broadcast, then we are part of a simulation. <clears throat> We're part of like an illusion. 
we are we are creating our own reality based on our perceptions and they prove that with entanglement with two particles and the particles basically to make it uh, simple for you uh, there's no, nothing is separate separation is an illusion in other words what I do right here affects a billion light years away a star what you do right now affects everything there's nothing that's separate hmm means you can't be separate from your manifestation or your desires that's right Vanessa O double O one one everything is nothing you gotta backtrack so for you to get what you want you gotta go backwards someone says does the cabal control us with numbers no Do you have friends in your community that I discuss this stuff with? Yeah, you guys. Yep. So, see how it works? Alright, let's see who we have here. Someone wants to come in here. Is everything, everything is nothing. What a profound insight that is. Nothing is everything and everything is nothing. Think about that. Yeah, you got you gotta look. You gotta let things unfold the way they are going to unfold you cannot try to jump in and try to do your own thing in a process because i told you before the universe is a self-correcting code so all you're going to do is you're just going to mess yourself up you're going to mess your energy up because the universe is going to do what it's already set to do based on what you desire based on your subconscious mind yeah, I love this by uh, G Rhythm. Accept what is, let go of what was, and have faith in what will be. Perfect example. Now let's go to the entanglement thing now to focus more on that. So, if everything is entangled, that means you and what you want are also entangled. So there is no need for you to be obsessive or to put what you want as a, on a pedestal or important. Because anytime, look guys, anytime you make something important, you are miscreating. Anytime you ex you're obsessed with something, you are miscreating. Anytime you play something as normal, you are co-creating. Anytime you play, play something just as is, you are deliberately creating. See the spectrum how it goes? I mean, all right, let's look at the human body. You can have all the scientists and the doctors. They still have no idea on the intricate level, on the cellular system of why the body does what it does. All they can tell you is your body is going to heal. They can't tell you the instant detail. They can't tell you the quantum meaning, the, the genetic, the DNA structure of why the body does what it does. All they can tell you is, hey, your DNA is just programmed to heal. If you have a cold or something, they'll say, all right, here, take this. Or you get, or you get it yourself. He says, your body will heal. They can't tell you specifically how that stuff happens, man. The reason I can't tell you because they don't know. That's something you can't just, they can't figure out. They just, they'll just know that, okay, we know it's going to do this. We know it's going to do that. So the big picture is there's just some things that you just have to let unfold and let the universe do because everything is already pre-programmed. Don't bust your mind up. Don't bust your brain out trying to figure out why it's not working, what's wrong with you, why certain people are where they are, or people have that thing too. Why certain people don't like me? Why this or that? Uh, because you have to consider that there is a higher source at work 
beyond your primitive mind, beyond our primitive mind. That's the beginning to, of freedom from the three-dimensional world. Look, I said this before. You don't know this. You can only suffer in 3D. But did you know there are other dimensions where you cannot suffer, where you truly exist? In other words, you can only feel guilt, shame, low self-esteem, not worthy, judgment. All these emotions can only exist in a three-dimensional world. It cannot exist in the higher states of consciousness. It cannot exist in your true self. It cannot exist there. And the source of these limitations and the source of these issues is tied to what's called the prefrontal cortex or the primitive monkey brain of the mind, the ego, the conscious mind. That's the housing of all suffering and all this stuff. Because in this, in this part of the mind, we have been pre-programmed to accept these things and they mess our emotions up. But the truth is, here's the truth now, who you are is very is a higher self than what you are here. See, the thing is like, on this 3D world, this is what you do. But it's not who you are. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like someone says, this is what I do, but this is not who I am. Like, I exist in the three-dimensional world. I have limitations, but that's just a representative. That's not who I'm actually, who I'm actually am. If you know that, then you're gonna be you're gonna ace in in creating your world. That's, it's easy because because then you then you know the then you have the freedom. Then you know like damn. So who am I really then? Who you are right? Let me tell you who you are right now. Who are you really right now? You are the awareness of self. You are the observer of everything. You can okay. You're observing your reality right now. You're aware of whatever you're feeling, pain, happiness, success, distract, whatever, you are aware of that. That's an awareness. That's not who you are. Awareness of self now leads you to your higher self. That's the first step. You have to be knowing that, okay, I'm just aware of this stuff. I'm just, in other words, you're just here watching it. You're sitting down watching. You're in a fully immersed movie. That's what you are of your life. Every, every single person has their own movie. It's like all of us is in a movie theater and each person is sitting down and imagine you have these VR glass sh shades on and each person is living in their own reality, but we're all together. We're all connected. And all of us, this analogy to make sense for you guys, all of us, we're sitting down and we have these, these glasses things on and we're seeing our reality and all our stuff, but we're next to each other, but we're not even aware that we're next to each other because it's parallel. So it's like a different dimension because we're so tied up into our, into our own world. Um, that's what you are. So when you take those shades off, you exit the movie. You know, like, okay, man, this isn't even real. Why was I even suffering in there? Why was I even feeling ashamed? Why was I even feeling unworthy? And you take your shades off, and you're like, damn. So this was all fake. That's the same concept with 3D, 5D, or higher self. But in this concept, you can actually use the higher self to interfere or interject in the 3D. You can use your higher self to limit the suffering, to feel more worthy, to feel more confident. You can actually affect the three-dimensional world to make it a better place for you to exist, point blank. Of course you can do it. Because, um, check this out. The 3D world is a feedback from the source of the fifth dimensional or higher dimensional worlds. Okay, all right, let me make it simple. Sorry, Cause maybe some of you might like, huh? All right, I'm gonna put it to you like this. I'll, I'll use this analogy here. Cause an, an analogy makes it easy for you, for you guys to understand. Uh, someone asked, pre-program means destiny. Yes, pre-program means uh, destiny, but not exactly. You can take different routes to get to your destiny. That's where free will comes in, but pre-program means it's already set up. All right, put it to you like this. All right. Okay, let's use fire and, and smoke. A fire is the source. 
the smoke, fire is a cause, the smoke is the effect. The, in the 5D, in the up above, the fire is the real you. The smoke that comes from the fire is the 3D world. Okay, so the true source is an effect. So we're not even at the true source. This is just an effect from the true source. So that means if I can go to the true source or get to the fire, then I'm in the real world, right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna be on top of my game. That's where I'm gonna be able to influence this world. See how that works? Yep, that's right. Um, user, yep, you gotta be the observer. Oh, the key is you have to be the observer of everything and nothing at the same time. Everything and nothing at the same time. Someone asked me, well, well, what does that look like? It looks like being in the moment and being present and just living from moment to moment. That's what that. So if you want to, if you want to figure out, it's like, damn, what is this guy talking about? How, how do I become this observer of everything and nothing at the same time. You can only become the observer of everything and nothing at the same time by being present. Because in this moment is where everything is happening. Nothing is happening tomorrow or yesterday. Nothing's happening. Despite, listen, despite what your mind is telling you, despite what your mind is showing you, it's not happening. It's a projection. Only thing happens is right now. So, for you to, to do this, you have to start to think, you, you have to shrink, actually shrink your thinking. The, the more you shrink your thinking, the smarter you become. Think about that, right? That's why I'm telling you how the matrix program you. Everything is backwards. Listen, the more you think, the dumber you become. The less you think, the smarter you become. The major will tell you, the more you think, the smarter you become. That's actually not true. Because the less you can think, you shut off the conscious logical mind and then you get into the higher intuitive, higher self mind. Because when you can just be present and you can just be aware and just feel listen, that's when the true knowledge and information come to you. But if you're always thinking, how can you always get the answer? Thinking is a product of the conscious logical mind. Now, I'm not telling you not to think on anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm always showing you the big picture here. I'm showing you that if you want to step your game up to that next level, this is the habit you have to create. And this is what they don't teach you because if you even look at it, if you look at the brain, when the brain is lighting up, the brain, the brain, less is more to the brain. Your brain is actually built to be efficient. Your brain don't like to work hard. Your brain likes to work smart. Your, light, your brain is more of a quality than a quantity thing. That's just how you're designed. So the less you can think, the more you become aware and that's where you get more knowledge and understanding. But if you're someone and you're always thinking, that's going to lead to overthinking. Overthinking is going to lead to stress. Stress is going to lead to depression, anxiety, and the cycle will continue because that's just how the mind works. But the less you can think and just become aware and be the observer without the judgment and see and focus and put what you want and let it go, the more your life change, the more success, the more abundance comes in. It's really that simple. It's a process of quantum physics and it's a process of neuroscience of how the mind and the brain works. That's all it is. And we, we have documented evidence of all, of all of this stuff. Someone asked me, how do you think less? Well, how do you think less is by limiting your thinking about the past and the future. That's the first step. If you want to think less, Stop thinking about the future and stop thinking about the past and just start to focus and be aware of what's happening now. You have to shrink your days and hours into just a single moment at each time. That's how to start to stop thinking. And also, if you want to stop thinking, you can start to focus. Well, what's we'll say about focus? Isn't focus thinking? Well, thinking and focus are two different things. 
focus is having an intent and seeing something repeatedly as a process. Thinking is going here, there, over there, all that stuff. That's thinking. So if you want to stop thinking, start practicing focus. So what, what do you focus? You focus on what you want. See how that works? Mm -hmm. You focus on what you want. That's the, I mean, that's the process. That's the process. Cynthia, how are you doing? I can't hear you. Turn up your volume. Good morning. Good. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad I caught you, man. I've been so busy. I wanted to set it up with you and Mr. Speaker, but I just okay. time right now to set everything up. One second. Uh, but I got you here. Yeah, What's my, going on? The video look like it's messing up a little. Yeah. So wait, Cynthia. All right, Cynthia, Cynthia, check this out. So guys, so of course you know who this is. This is Cynthia Stafford. She won the Mega. So you know her story. She's been on a podcast before. So I'm glad you're on now. I know you have a book coming out. Uh, is it out oh, yet? It's out. Oh, it's called Seeing. What's the name I of the book? Seeing. 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 Uh-huh. All right. So look, Cynthia. This goes into accordance with what I'm talking about. So can you yes. shed some light on the power of visualizing? Because that's one way you can become focused and not think. So tell me the power of visualizing and how you used it to win that lottery jackpot. I didn't catch everything that you said, but I can speak in regards to how it worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, when you have focused attention, uh-huh. On what it is that you want. You are essentially magnetizing it to you. What I mean by that is it, it takes, um, you know, no, uh, putting time and effort into it. And to focus your attention on it, you have to really just take a few moments out of your time to meditate. If you don't have a, the time to meditate, on what it is you want instead of what you don't want, what you're going to bring into your existence is the things you don't want. And so I, in order to cut down all competition or whatever, uh, in terms of myself, because I don't believe there is competition, because to right. me, I believe abundance is more than enough. But you have to Great. have it in your mind that you're an abundant person. So visualizing, you have to see yourself abundant and then make yourself by feeling that you're abundant. You have to do this make-believe. You have to tell yourself, I am. I am rich. I'm wealthy. Even when your conscious mind is fighting you to tell you that you're not, because it will do that. Because it will, because it, it's programmed that way. Man, that's... I'm glad, listen, I'm glad you brought that up because that's what I was just talking about. I'm just, I was talking about how the mind will distract you because it doesn't see evidence of what you want. So just because you don't see the evidence doesn't mean it's not possible, right? Exactly. It's because you don't see it. That's what faith is all about. And um, that's something I talk about in my book too, having belief. If you don't believe it, regardless of what you can see, because that's what faith is. Faith is the assured expectation. I'm taking this from the Bible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of things that you hope for, even though you can't see it. You, you can't, can't see, see it. it. But you just have to believe it is a possibility. All it's right. A possibility. So when you take that faith along with like expecting, that's that expecting, though I can't see. And then you put it along with the thing you desire whether it's a job, uh, well, in, in, in terms of wealth, that could be job, it can be, you know, a number of things because wealth adds up to whatever it is 
that's important to that person. Exactly. But whatever so, it is, whether it's love or whatever, it's what you sense and say and you feel within, you will eventually make it happen. You will. All right. And that's let me ask that you, people uh, don't go ahead. All right. Let me, let, let me ask you this question because okay, when when I won the lottery, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I visualized the, the exact way it came out. But interestingly, when I checked the ticket and it says top prize claim at the lottery, it kind of felt like a normal thing for me, like this was supposed to happen because I kept doing it so much. When you won, did you get that type of feeling as well? Like Because you've been visualizing it so much, it, when it happened, it felt like it didn't feel like too crazy or too unreal. It just felt like, a release of like, okay, this is, I was waiting for this to happen? Yeah. When it happened, I, I, I remember seeing the amount. And I had seen that same amount before, and it didn't mm -hmm. happen. Um, it was kind of like a year or so prior. And right. I just, but it didn't, I just said, it's still going to happen. So I never gave up my faith. So when it did happen, it was one of those, you breathe, you have a, a moment of, you take in a deep breath and just say, okay, it's here. And yeah, you do have this relief and release. And release, release, yeah. It's a re yeah, I had the release. My release was like, it's about time. That's the first thing I said when it happened. I was like, man, about time. And then I, the emotion, the, you know, the, the feeling came and then I, the, real, the realization came. But um, guys, if you don't know, so who, what, this is Cynthia Stafford. She won, what is 112 mil, right? In the, in the mega... Uh, yeah. She used visualization, law of attraction. She has her book out right now. You should go get a copy. Go, go ahead, Cynthia. What's the name of the book and where can they get it? <clears throat> it's Sting. And it right now is on my website and it will be on Amazon and a few mm -hmm. other sites soon. But right now it's on CynthiaPStafford.com. Cynthia okay, so you can C Cynthia B. Stafford. So you can go to CynthiaBStafford.com and check and get her book. I'm, you know what? I'm going to go on there. I'm going to grab me a copy as well, Cynthia. Uh, I'm awesome. going to show you the support. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go there and get a copy myself. Uh, I mean, the, because look, there's one thing, guys, that uh, Cynthia and I can attest to. And uh, beyond the lottery, anything you want to achieve in your life, the, the one thing I know is you have to be good at seeing what you want in your mind. And some That's people true. say to me, you know, some people come to me and say, Mark, uh, I can't visualize. Yes, you can visualize. It's just that you haven't practiced so can you, Cynthia, can you talk about visualizing, practicing, and how to do it correctly? So, Because a lot of people here, I mean, they want to know. So what is your technique? How do you do it? I just see it. I see myself with whatever it is I want. And I, don't, and I take a few moments of my time seeing it. It's the same as when a person want to go on a vacation. They look it up. And, you know, they go and look and see, where do I want to go? I want uh -huh. to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Greece or whatever. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Africa. Well, you look typically in this lifetime, okay, I can say that. We yeah. have the opportunity to be able to look on the internet and imagine ourselves there. Well, that's what you're doing. You are imagining yourself where you want to be or what you with what you want to have. Now it can be a challenge when you're trying to do that with a person if that right. person is not, you know, but we're talking about items. You see right. yourself with an item, whether it's a car, some, a clothing item, a house or whatever, you have to see it. That's what my book is about. You have to see it. You have to use that imagination and work it. Wow. Work you it. Tell people, you know what they talk about? Well, how? Well, make it like your job. Make it your side job. Your side job is to focus and pay attention to what oh, you I love want. that. Oh. And saying, I can't get it. Because the more that they say that, that's exactly what they're going to get, exactly what they believe. Wow. Uh, I, listen, I like what you just said. I, I, I'm going to have to use that. I'm going to tell you guys. Side job. Everyone works, but you have your side hustle, your side gig. Why don't you start to use your mental power as your side gig? Um, it's, it's, you know, listen, there's something else, too, that I want to touch on that, to show you that. So, look, Cynthia visualized she won the lottery. I visualize I won a lottery. So what's the point here? The point is, guys, look, everything comes in the mental. Then it goes into the physical. The mental is the yes. spiritual. You apply faith. It manifests into the physical. 
So what is what is the big thing here? You have to get good at either seeing yourself in first person or third person. As Cynthia say, get in what you want. I mean, the biggest thing is though, the biggest thing is, right, Cynthia, would you agree? You have to decide and make up your mind on what you want and then stick with it. Okay. Just like you did, you, you decided you're gonna win, you stuck with it and bam. Yeah, and a lot of people think, think you know, there's various thoughts as to how I decided and when showed up. I decided a few years prior to that. And I right. never wavered from my belief. Faith and then it and I that wasn't the only thing that I have manifested. I've manifested a number of things that I said I was going to and still hey, talk, let's talk hey point. talk about some of them. Talk about some of them because uh people let's people let people know what you you some of the stuff you manifest that you don't talk about because I know the lottery thing you, I know you get inundated with the lottery thing. So talk about something else that you manifested that you thought was pretty big for you. Just you know like wow I did that. Um, okay. okay, well, my movie production company, and it wasn't just about movies, but my production company, um, uh -huh. um, I had, that was something I used to talk about with my dad, and then I was, you know, you know, it'd be nice to, you know, movies, and this is just class conversation, but I would always say, I am going to do that. I need a part of my ad in. Okay. And that became a reality. I'm on the board of uh, the FN, which is like a major theater mm -hmm. company in Los Angeles. And all of the board members are pretty you know, high level people in the entertainment business and there's a room right. name after me. So, so I wow. you know, there's an event there. People see my name. And I don't care if they run Disney, Netflix, whatever. Most of these people know me. I know them. So this is something that I had said. I'm going to be, that was one of my I, I am's. And my, right. and this is something else I talk about in my book, the I am principle. Mm -hmm. You have to have an I am principle and be, and, and just, that's part of your, your job is who, who you are. Right. So. I love that. I love that. I love that. So, so guys, I know the sound is a little bit uh, distorted, but what Cynthia is basically saying is that she had yeah. uh, her her faith, and she used "I am." She declared what she wanted, and she stuck with it, and in she had faith. Of, and uh, more, I mean, more of that you can read in her book. Go ahead, Cynthia. Like visualizing and making it happen, you have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Number one, you, mm -hmm. you have to just, you know, you know, constantly work on that, that conscious mind. The right. conscious mind, because the conscious mind is going to always come. Yeah, but the conscious mind is the, uh, the sneaky you, guy. You see, And it will tell you no, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. Do that. Yeah, we're we're so Cynthia, we're having a little bit of a uh, feedback delay here. I don't know if is the Wi-Fi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me better? You. All right. So look, Cynthia, we're having a little feedback, but listen, I'm gonna get you on again with Mr. Speaking. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this to uh, no else has done better. So again, your book, seeing on that, and the people who mm -hmm. done it. You having the feedback? That were it was based 
on luck. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then everybody that's on I think we're having a, I think we're having a feedback feedback here. Thing is it's based on luck because <laughs> For you, all right, Cynthia. <laughs> You're fighting a whole guys. This is how, like, I'm showing you how things work in reality. You're gonna have feedback loops, Just so this is a feedback loop. When Cynthia is talking, it slows down, but that's how reality works as well. You put something out, it'll take time to feedback. But Cynthia, so let's get up again. We'll talk again, and I'll get you on a real podcast. Thank you. I'll get somebody else in here. Let's see, Dr. Billion 888. So go get her book, guys. It's called Seeing, and we're going to get somebody else who wants to get in here. And I don't know how to disconnect, Cynthia. So, <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. Let's see who we have here. All right. So, guys, the key, again, as you heard Cynthia said, right? If you missed it, I know the sound was a little bit distorted, but basically what she's saying to you is this, is that whatever you want, you have to apply the faith, you have to apply the belief, and you have to apply the repetition. If that, it's not going to happen. That's what faith is. Faith is seeing the unknown as known. Faith is seeing the unbelievable as believable. Faith is seeing the impossible as possibility. That's what faith is. And that's something that is all of us are inherited. That's an inheritance. All of you have faith, but you just have to know how to apply it or turn it on. So turning it on is a key. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for uh, allowing me to get on with you guys. Yes. How are you doing? Talk to me. What's happening? We're, oh, we got you got good. You, well, you got good connections. Cynthia's connection was a little choppy, but we got the the, the main points she was talking about. Um, I just got in. I just came on, and I seen that you guys were alive, so I kind of missed the first part. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do have some testimonies regarding the uh, the law of attraction and uh speaking things into existence yeah um if i may i can share those. yeah yeah okay go ahead um i um had suffered from what they call crohn's for a while and uh -huh. um, it's been some years and i decided i had to treat and declared it that i'm going to heal myself from crohn's and right a lot of attraction and my faith and um you know, everything and um and my affirmations too and with meditating as well. And so what I did was I uh started meditating and doing my meditations, you know, and um and using the energy of the sun, I would attract that, you know, uh into my life, you know, meditate in the sun. This is how I was right. doing. I said I'm gonna use the sun rays and energy from the sun to go through my body and heal me. And I'm gonna have faith that that is what's happening when I do this. Uh -huh. And so it came about, you know, just to make a long story short, it came about my doing that and standing on that. I went to the doctor and I was examined and everything else. And, um, and I was told that I don't have Crohn's anymore. Wow. And it's an incurable, supposed oh, yeah, yeah. incurable. Disease. All right. Okay. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me, let me know. Let me talk to the viewers so they can know what's happening. So okay. guys, if you, if you don't know what Crohn's is, Crohn's is an inflammatory uh, disease that affects the bowels. So it's really the nervous system and everything. So 
it's not you can't cure it but it's treatable it has flare ups so what she has done and i'm showing you this she has mastered the power of her intention of her mind of her belief of her focus and she cured it so the question becomes our right, mark how did she do that well it's very simple she did, she did it because she tapped into her subconscious mind the subconscious mind is the mind that controls the cells your immune system and remember it's illogical so what did she do she kept envisioning healing and remember now the cells in your body they can only see what you project inside they can't see outside uh and that's how you can do it just like you can heal yourself you can manifest anything that was so powerful thank you you're so very welcome you're so very welcome yeah um i, I love that because uh there's a lot of people that suffer with crohn's i know people that suffer with it it can be debilitating man oh my god tell me about it i've had it for a number of years yeah um, by the same doctor that diagnosed me with it many years ago i think 2008 around that time it's the same doctor that told me that i don't have it anymore wow so you yeah. can imagine how i'm feeling right now so i'm just yeah. you know thanking god and uh, and you know and everything and praising god about that because yeah. i use my own you know power that's within me the sub my of my subconscious mind and i heal myself so, so look um can you can you give some of our viewers some tips on how to do to heal themselves the, the, your format what did you do what kind of steps did you take to do it so cuz i'm sure there's a lot of individuals here suffering from all type of stuff and they'd like to exercise the power of their mind what what can you what can you suggest to good start okay what i do is, on a daily basis i what i did well before this is that i had written out some affirmations i am healed from Crohn's and uh, from any other, you know, and all the symptoms and mm -hmm. uh, complications. That's what I wrote out. Okay. I, excuse me, that's my grandbaby in the background. No problem. I, um, I said, I'm, I, you know, and I listened to this. Matter of fact, I recorded it in my own voice. And uh -huh. I'm going to put it out there, too, that uh, some of your, your, um, your uh, courses, I did get those courses and, you know, get the, um, the affirmations that you have. I listened to those as well. Um, Thank you. So Good. This is what I did. I wrote out my affirmations. I recorded them in my own voice and I listened to them every single day. And then I would go outside. I have a lot of trees in my back uh, backyard. I would go outside and I meditate on the warm days in the sun. And I would say to myself, I am healed. Uh -huh. I'm healed. And um, I accept this healing. I receive this healing. And I would do things, you know, with my hands to you know, and bring it in, in like a incoming motion to receive mm. this healing through my body as I meditate and allow the sun's rays, which is natural healing. It has that natural healing energy mm -hmm. and um, to come over me and wash over me and then, you know, to let it, and I receive it. By faith, I receive it and I saw myself healed from it. I would also grab onto a tree because trees have energy as well. And then I would hold on to the tree and receive the energy from the tree, the natural, anything that's nature. And uh -huh. so, you know, this is the process that I did. As a matter of fact, I made a video of it, and I will post it so that everybody, you know, can, can see what That's I good. Do. That's good. What is your, is your YouTube channel? Yes, I have a YouTube channel. It's um, Aliyah Odalea uh, by Yashirol Antoinette Griffin. It's, you know, I have two names, but um, uh -huh. Antoinette Griffin. Uh, it's on YouTube, and I I posted it. I mean, you know, it's my for my Crohn's healing journey. That's what my uh -huh. page is. Um, join me on that, and I made a video how I did it, and you know the, the rituals that I did on a daily basis, and everything else. So when I went back to the doctor, that you know to, to 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 have evidence of that, I did say that in the video I said that I was going to post. The, uh, the, uh, the evidence, you know, so that people can see that I, at one time I did have Crohn's and it's in my medical records and mm -hmm. now I don't have it anymore. So, you know, speak so that I can present the evidence, you know, that I don't have Crohn's any longer. I love so, it. Listen, go ahead and go ahead and DM me the link to that video. And then what I can do, I can probably put it on my community tab for anyone interested and okay. they could watch it. Because I, uh, I mean, that's important. That, that's that's powerful. That because uh, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of us, we see these things, but people don't really believe it until they see someone or meet someone that's actually 
experiencing it or doing it. And this will, this will definitely serve. So thank you so much. So DM me and I'll uh, give me the link to the video. Uh, guys, I'll put the video if you're interested in watching it and okay. seeing how she, she did her journey. Could I say one more thing? Yeah. This is regarding Cynthia. Cynthia yeah. is my mentor and uh -huh. she is my friend. I, I, I attracted her, I manifested her into my life. So we do, we, you know, talk and then everything, you know. Um, and um, what, you know, Cynthia has been kind of coaching me as, as well, too. On she's, She mentors me, for sure, on, right. on how to manifest, you know, the, you know, the lottery. And right. so like, as she did it, I, you know, like I said, I manifested her into my life because I need to see it, you know, what I wanted to be done, I used to see someone that had done it before. And that's how I manifested. This was years ago, a few years ago. I manifested mm -hmm. her, you know, as a lot of me running. She won over like nine digits uh, of money. And I was like, oh my, okay. And so uh -huh. I manifested her. And we began to talk and everything. So she's showing me, she's coaching me, and she's, she's mentoring me on how I can do this for myself. So that's my next thing. I, you know, um, um, I did like kind of like a ritual thing regarding that to you know manifest in the lottery, but I'll post that when that comes to pass. Oh, that's gonna I happen. Win. I win all the time, but I'm gonna get yeah. the grand prize. The grand oh, yeah. prize that's... is the next thing. Oh, that's thank gonna happen. You. We're look we're looking forward to that one. So thank you. Thank you so much. You're so so very welcome. And I will DM you that the video. Yeah, that yeah, I'll dude. Do. Yeah, guys. Okay, so, guys, you're seeing right here the power of our focus and our attention here, guys. You know, uh, someone asked me here, uh, Mark, are, are you or me and Cynthia playing the Powerball? I'm playing the Powerball. I, I don't know if Cynthia will, but I know I will. Maybe she will. I'll have to ask her. Oh, yeah, Cynthia says definitely. Cynthia playing the Powerball. She says definitely. She's playing the Powerball too. Uh, so, that's, so that was one of Cynthia's students here that she's helping. So that's great, Cynthia. Great job on doing that. And this person is manifesting the lottery. So, yep, amazing. So I'm just looking at these comments here. Amazing. Healing from Crohn's. Yep. Hi, Mark. Some saying that souls have a life contract to be poor and you can't control, control do you? Uh, no, you, you don't have, you don't have, you cannot, listen, you cannot have a contract to be poor because poor is a state of mind. It's made up. It's something we make up when we got here. We got poor and rich. There's only abundance. If you look at every universe, everything is abundant. Everything is infinite. So if you come here and you think you're poor, it's because you're programming yourself to be poor. You're programming your subconscious. Now remember Cynthia said now, listen guys, when you're going to create something, if you keep thinking about what you don't want, then that's what's going to come in. So Cynthia, so if you want to get Cynthia's book, guys, it's called Seeing and Cynthia, it's uh, Cynthia, Cynthia, stafford.com okay go check her out i'm going to get her book as well <clears throat> oh, read it i want to see her story as well so that's cynthia p stafford.com okay so thank you cynthia for coming in the chat and um joining in let me see if i get one more person here and then i gotta go let me see here it's great you guys are so great here Keep those comments coming in here. But you know what? Cynthia, someone asked, Cynthia, is playing the Powerball? Damn, I don't have a chance. Someone says, Cynthia, if you play the Powerball, <clears throat> they don't have a chance to win. No, you're actually going to have a, you actually can win because the universe splits off. There's every, everyone, you're not going to miss what's yours is for yours. You're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. And Cynthia can attest to that. Okay. Um, but look, the interesting thing is, I want to go back to what we were, uh, Cynthia was talking about. You have to make a side job and create in your mind and your, your visions a side job. The affirmations, you know, uh, she healed herself. The other person that came on here, she healed herself from Crohn's by what? Affirmations, visualizing, focusing. You can do it too. You can win the lottery. As Cynthia says, everyone has an opportunity to, to do it. So, because remember now, we live in an infinite universe. We don't live in a limited universe. Everything is infinite. And you are an infinite soul, an infinite being. But only, the only reason you feel lack or you're not good enough is because you're in a three-dimensional space. And in this three-dimensional world, you have people around you that have lack belief, lack mentality. 
and they influence your thinking and they influence your subconscious mind. But if you can understand that, you can escape from the conscious and get into the unconscious. And that's where the miracles happen. That's how you can win the lottery. That's how you can manifest a house, a car, a book, whatever you want to do. You can do all that stuff because when you go into the mental world, that's where things can conjure up and happen. But most people, they get stuck in the conscious world. Don't listen. You got to use your conscious mind to observe the process. That's what conscious mind does. Don't try to use your conscious mind to create the experience. Let your unconscious create the experience. You feel it and let your conscious mind observe it. That's the correct way to do it. Hitton, how are you doing, Hitton? So, Cynthia, if you're still here, Hitton asks a question. He says, how clear or vivid are your visualizations? It's a question for Cynthia. If you're here, Cynthia, Hitton asks, how clear or vivid were your visualizations, are your visualizations? So, Hitton, I can touch on that until if Cynthia's here, she can answer that as well. Uh, so, Cynthia, there's the question for you. How clear and vivid were your um your visualization. So, okay, what on on my aspect, when I visualize, when I first started to visualize, my the images weren't clear, but as I got better, they became vivid. And what I visualize, guys, I do it in what I call common sense visualization. You don't have to get super detailed. You just have to have a, a basic premise of what you want and then keen on that and it becomes. Now, some people can become very vivid. Some people can become uh, not so vivid. Cynthia, you're here. Okay, question hint, hint, hint and ask, how clear or vivid were your visualizations? In other words, when you were visualizing, Cynthia, it, was it very, very clear? Did it get vivid or what? So that's a question from one of our viewers here, Hitton, Holistic Hitton. So uh, let's see if she can answer that, Hitton, because she's in the chat here. Uh, let me see who, who else. We got Sagar. We got a couple more, three more people here to come in. Okay, she says, as clear. So, Hitton, your answer to your question is, Cynthia says, as clear as you can imagine them. So, imagine. So, uh, Dr. Billion888 says, talk more about imagination. <clears throat> yes, the imagination, well... You know, visualizing is your imagination. You know, think about this. When you, were, when you were a kid, what were you really good at? Think about kids, right? When we were kids, what were we good, we good at? We were good at imagining. Remember we had our, I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I used to have my, like, G.I. Joes and little Transformer stuff and just playing around and just, I mean, I was into my world, man. It felt so real to me, man. And, you know, as I got older, I, kept, I started to re reflect back and I wondered, well, I was like, I wonder why... As I got older, society reflected me from using my imagination. They more directed me into more an, of an analytical process in mindset, like a problem-solving mindset. And then it dawned on me. It's like, wow, we are basically being taught extinct of our power of imagination. The world is creating something to try to extinct your power to create. That's what school is doing right now. But guess what? It's impossible. They cannot extinct your imagination because your imagination is encoded in your DNA. You cannot extinct something that you didn't create. It's a part of fabric of the universe. So what they decide is since they can't extinct it, they distract you from using it. And that's what happens. That's why you have more analytical. They teach you to use your reason in mind. They teach you all this stuff. Because the power of the mind is very powerful. See that? Cynthia said, thinking about it is used in your imagination. Simple. So if anyone wants to know, what is it? Someone asks, what's, do you use your imagination? Just basically thinking about it. That's your imagination. And that's coming from Cynthia. Remember, Cynthia now won 112 mil in the mega so she knows a thing or two about manifesting, all right? Let's keep that in mind as well. So thinking about it is visualizing. And that's all it is, guys. 
you just you just got to get clear on what you want. You got to see it. You got to repeat it. You got to have the faith and you got to let it go and you got to expect it. And it's going with your life and things are going to come in. <clears throat> so Cynthia, I got another question for you, for you here. If you're still here. This is from Jimmy3791. Cynthia, did you get early signs that you were going to win? So that's a question for you, Cynthia. Did you get early signs that you were going to win the lottery? So, Cynthia, if you're still here, that's a question here from our Jimmy. He wants to know, did you get any signs that you were going to win? Remember, go check out Cynthia's book. See, and it's on our website, CynthiaPStafford.com. All right, cntpstafford.com. So guys, the key, the key point is this. You live in the physical, but you create in the mental. Cynthia said she used, she used her imagination to believe. Yep, the imagination is seeing it over and over. Thinking about it is your imagination, yes. So Cynthia answered your question. She says, yes, when she saw it, that was her sign, Jimmy. So I think what she was referring to, when she saw it, the, the, the number, I think it was 112, or a number that she was uh, manifesting to in the lottery. So that was her sign. When she saw that number she was manifesting, I think it was 112 million or something. Um, she manifested it. Medicine Rx. Get me on, Mark. All right, let me see what I got. Get, I got like a lot of, people here let me see what i can get here all right let me get one more person someone's because someone here is saying like get me on mark so let me get me on <clears throat> let me see if i can get you on man medicine rx hey what's up man yo, yo what's up mark what's up man see hey I, I see that when you say yo yo get me on mark i see hey uh, you got you got you gotta you gotta tell what you want so i got you on what's going on yeah, I appreciate it, man. Now, I'm, I'm getting ready to do some work right now. I've seen you was on live, so I figured I'd just um, come up and say a few things right quick. Nice. But, um, I, feel, I, I feel good. I was just um, in Home Depot grabbing some equipment. I'm, I'm going to be doing some fall work, some cleanup, some lawn cleanup. Uh-huh. And the total on, on one of my things that I paid cash was 777 And I told the lady, I looked at her, I'm like, I might just win the jackpot today. So that was one thing, and then I paid the the other amount on my card, and it just ah. popped up eight 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 three times on, on the on the card reader. But I've been getting a lot of synchronicities daily, a lot of seven seven sevens, a lot of eight eight eights, and I just I just been rolling with the punches, you know. I haven't been too eager to to try to create something. I just been allowing, you know, like I would play my numbers consistently. And if I get an yeah. urge to have a little fun and, and, and play a few different numbers that just might come to mind, I'll do that. But just waiting uh -huh. for the time because I feel like it's done. You know, it's already done and it just takes time to for things to catch up in, in, in this reality. Hey, I mean, you know, Cynthia was just on, man. I don't know if you missed it, but we were talking about that. And, uh, you know, remember now, she was manifesting that, that jackpot. It took a couple of years, but remember now, to her, time didn't exist. It was just a vision. So uh, a tip for you guys is when you're creating something, you got to take time out of the equation because when it happens, it happens now. Time is a concept of the ego. And I like the fact what you just said, that you're not forcing anything. You're just flowing and creating. And that's the state you got to be in. Now that you've seen that 777, man, you need to go out and get you some Powerball ticket because you may be the man, may be the man with the 1.4 uh, billion, man. And I know, hey, and I know you're going to be calling me, right? You get that jackpot because you're going to be calling me, right? And be like, hey, Mark, I got a donation for you, right? <laughs> I'm looking out for you, man. You know, and I want to, when you get the podcast back up, I want to get on because, you know, we had a few episodes. I have a yeah. lot of manifestation stories. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, I have a lot. I, I, okay. I don't know if you recall, I, I was on the podcast like three times. I do. And I shared of, course. of course. Of yeah, course. I remember yeah, so. that. Yeah, of course. Of course. But look, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, so I, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do podcast, but I'm going to put it on my main channel. So what I'm going to start to do is, um, the other channel I'm gonna do I'm gonna make it like a deliberate creator channel before with all those videos that were that were took that were uh, removed I'm, I have all the audios of my of my my videos so I'm gonna re recreate those and put those on my other channel and what I'm gonna do is 
I'm just going to have you guys come on. I'll do Zoom. Maybe I'll do twice a month where I'll just have a podcast and I'll put it on my main channel. So that's what I'm going to decide to do. Okay. Yeah, no, that's smooth. Yeah. Well, that's going to be good. I want to say another thing. After yeah. I saw all the numbers this morning, I got a call from uh, the cemetery. My dad passed away like a year ago. Uh -huh. And it was a hassle with COVID and everything to get the stone. She just called me today saying it's ready. It's in the cemetery put up. So that just adds more to the momentum of things building up for me and, and me actually seeing everything fall into place. Like uh -huh. I've been seeing, I've been seeing a lot of animals that you don't uh -huh. see often, like bald eagles, foxes, and these are all spiritual signs and, and messages that come into your life so if you if the viewers if you see like weird animals that are not common yeah cross the path randomly look up the meaning because these are messages from spirit through animals um so a lot of things been building up and i, I feel good man that's good I, I man got, good. i got four numbers of the powerball a few months ago got a hundred bucks but i'm mm. i just get that six this saturday so if no, you no, care not, about a winner from massachusetts i uh, got you it's not, it's not, you may get the six. It's not, you may get the six. You are the six winning numbers in the power. Look, Cynthia, Cynthia just commented. Cynthia just said $112 million amount for the Mega Millions was declared it will be mine. So you, you, so you got to declare that you are a winner already, man. Right. Declare it. Yeah. Don't, don't think, hey, I might win, I might. Just declare and let it go. I already won. Why, why, does it, why does it feel so good to be a lottery jackpot winner? Why do right, I feel right. so good now that I am right. consistently winning lottery jackpot prizes? Or right, this one. things like that often and communicating with people. We have to mm -hmm. learn how to even be more present. Right, be in the now then, even if things here, haven't materialized, right. you know? Here's one you can use, man. You can say this. Look, how different would my life be as the $1.2 billion top prize Powerball lottery jackpot winner. And just think about that. Use your imagination. Say, man, how different would my life be as the sole top prize, $1.2 billion Powerball winner, or whatever lottery? And then just embellishing that for a few seconds and let it go, man. And, I, and I, that, that's that's the sauce. Yeah. No, that's definitely a good one. And I, I, I hear your subliminals and they're similar to that one. I think another good one is, isn't it, so amazing that I'm the winner of the 1.2 billion lottery jackpot prize win. Yeah, how would it make me feel? When, when you yeah. say, isn't it amazing? You're asking like a question. Too. You're asking yeah, like a question, but you're also answering it. You, yeah. you get it? Yeah. So that's seven, another seven, powerful seven. one. I like that one too. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to arrive at my location, Mark. Like I said, just popping in, saying what's up. We'll be in touch right. in, in the near future and stay up, my man. Yeah, stay up, man. Thanks. All right, thank you. Let me see if I get one more person in here. So this person, uh, Doctor Billion Eight Eight, it's been on, it's been a, uh, uh, in the queue for a while. Let me see if I can get him in here. All right, Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Eight Eighty Eight Billion. Should you stop subliminals? Who's this here? Elena asking. Should you stop subliminals if you're doing? Hey, are you there? See, should you stop subliminals? If you've been, did someone ask, should you stop some? Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mark, how are you doing, man? Good, man, good. Okay, so yeah, you're, 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 you're so persistent, so I have to let you in, man. What's going on? Persistent is a good thing. Yes, yes, Mark. I uh, just want to thank you for all your uh, knowledge and wisdom, uh, getting a lot of uh, positivity from your videos. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank so you. Me, what's, what's, what's your question? What you got going on? No, no, not just, just questions. I just wanted to thank you, man. That, that's the oh, only man. thing. Uh, because, I, because I've been listening to your videos from the last uh, five years, past five Whoa. years. <laughs> thank you, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you're, you're a real follower, man. You've been on this journey for five years. Wow, that's amazing. Because uh, every, every video I watch uh, from a, uh, from a so hard, uh, and I appreciate you for what you do. Uh, thank, thank you, Mark. You, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You're so welcome. So what, what are you creating now? What are you manifesting? Any, any goals you want to create? No, Mark. I want to be a photographer, uh, one of the best photographers in the world. So I work for a company in India. Ah, all the okay. way. <laughs> so, so, so are you visualizing that? You, you manifesting that? You visualizing that? 
Yes, yes, Mark. I do it daily, and uh, your subnet subnet is uh, very helpful uh, every night when I listen it. Okay, amazing. Well, listen. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. I get one more person here, and then um, what time is it? Yeah, we get one more person here. I wish I could do this for a little longer, but it's great. It's great. It's great. Uh, I'm gonna upload this as well to the YouTube channel, so you guys don't miss it. Hey, how are you doing? Mom. How are you, man? I'm What's good. How are you? Good. Okay, Mark. I have been following you for last six months or so, right? So uh, I have ample amount of question, but I'll uh, stick to the very first question. That is, that I have been listening people like you, right? So manifestation, ah. meditation. I'm doing it for five or past five months. But there is a confusion in my mind. Like few ah. people used to say that. you have to imagine like you have to really imagine what you want right so if right. i am imagining it you people say that let go first of all i try to understand what is let go but uh, to be very serious i could not understand the actual meaning of let go number 1 of letting coming go coming to the second okay. point. yeah now right, so second point you. is that yeah, uh -huh. yeah please go ahead second point yeah second point is that people used to say that you have to visualize what you want you have to really think that you have achieved that thing right so while doing things like this i have few instance that i have get those thing but when i will go to the higher uh, if suppose my goal is a big thing or a, or a on a higher note so in that particular case there is a scarcity which i feel that is in me right so mm -hmm. how i have to change that per a perception that you always say in your video uh, guys you have to change your perception right so how you okay. see things over there but but uh, i was not able to understand and correlate what is the actual and three four five pillars of actual manifestations okay that's that's good all right so it's great here because we have we have an audience here so first of all guys so can you help my friend here so the first question he wants to know is how to let go and um, let's see if anyone in the comment can comment but i'm going to show you how to let go so how do guys how do you let go how do you let go he wants to know how to let go so cynthia said so here's cynthia's comment let go equals not to stress about it okay so that's the first thing that's important now because stress will lead to anxiety anxiety will lead to doubt so the first step to let go is right so let go basically means to know it's done expect it but don't put importance on it you know that okay so okay. when you when you when you're going to let go of something it's like it's already done all right it's already done yeah yeah let me see another one here Let go, knowing it's already yours. There's another one. Another one here says this is from just just to share says, live in the present moment and know it's coming. Just be grateful for the moment. I like that one right there. Okay, so you look. See everybody's helping you here to let go. See those are great stuff. Here's another. Here's a good one here from uh, who's this? This is from uh, Kenya C11. She says, Kenya, where you at? She says, do not put too much attachment. So the so the secret really to letting go is this: is to put it out. and then knowing the mental that it's going to happen but you don't care how or when but you have faith it's going to happen and then you keep your mind occupied on doing something else that's letting go okay 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 now All right. what's not okay what's not letting go is constantly thinking about when how where is it why is it not here is something wrong that's not letting go Okay, Got understood. It? All right. Yeah, the, ne yeah, the next yeah. part now I is what? The next part you asked was how to believe to manifest. What's the next part? Yeah, right. The actual five, uh, like, what are the actual pillars of manifestations, on which a particular oh. man should be focused all about? Okay, okay, got you. All right, guys. So his question is, what are the particular pillars of manifestation that you should be focusing on? Basically, he's asking, what's the process to manifest, right? Yeah yeah I have read a lot like for past 5 6 months but 
every time other person used to say some different thing and this quantum physics and the type of manifestation and the uh, key points which you are telling na so uh, what basically they are a bit contradictory in some aspects so you have That's all the knowledge like this so might be possible you will be able to clear me in this particular point okay i got you okay all right so i'll ask my audiences as well so and i'll also answer that for you so guys what are the pillars to manifest can someone tell me uh what is the process when you're going to manifest something the pillars of manifestation so let's see let's see here what are the pillars to manifest okay okay number one is this look so cynthia here is here so the first thing is to manifest anything all right you have to believe it's either possible for you that's number one that's the first pillar you're not going to manifest if you don't believe all right so cynthia says believe is all the right. first process that's correct so here's the next process once you believe something you're going to start to see evidence of your belief that because when you believe something your mind is going to start to see it. so the first thing is okay mark how do i believe how do i build a belief you're going to build a belief by visualizing or seeing yourself either in the first or the third person having that thing in the end okay for example okay. let's say you you want to have a job uh, a a job as a an architect or whatever you do architecture how do you how do you see that well you see yourself in the building sketchboard you're 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 doing architecture work you're in a building already you're at your desk you don't see the process of you being an architect you just see yourself in the architecture building working and you're creating uh, blueprints and then that's going to build a belief okay the next process okay, okay. is you're going to have to have the faith now faith the thing about faith is there's no there's no scientific aspect to faith even in quantum physics we cannot pinpoint what faith is so faith is just something that's just encoded in the universe it's in all of us there's the quantum physics cannot the, as great as quantum physics is it can tell you everything about the nature of reality it cannot explain faith faith is just something that you have to conjecture or conjure, conjure yourself by just expecting it right so the pillars okay. of manifestation is to see what you want repeatedly till it becomes a belief when it comes a belief then you're going to continue now to expect it when you expect it you're going to let it go when you let it go it's going to manifest those are the pillars to create anything in your life so let me repeat again so you can get it believe is possible by seeing the images visualize it's possible by seeing the end results faith is expecting it without knowing when or how and that's the process and when you do that it it, it interacts with your subconscious mind now which is the logical mind and the subconscious mind now is going to take what you see it's going to take the faith it's going to take the belief and it's going to create that and bring it into a physical world and that's where quantum physics comes in now so how does that work in in the in the quantum physics well when the subconscious mind gets something it interacts with energy or particles and these particles they bind together to create what we call matter so the subconscious mind can take things from the unseen and bring them into the physical world because your subconscious can process billions of bits of information that your conscious is not aware of so that's the science behind manifesting okay does that make sense and and I, yeah yeah it makes sense to me and uh, one more thing i wanted to uh, ask you like you always used to say that you have to uh, like uh, reschedule or you have to rewrite your uh, subconscious mind right so what is the process like uh, for if suppose for last 25 years or 30 years my subconscious mind has been developed in a particular way now i want to be like uh, rewrite my subconscious mind so what is the actual or the key points on which i should maintain focus on to rewrite this my subconscious and uh, subconscious mind and what is the minimum time which is expected by like you have all the ideas so what is the minimum time in which a particular can a particular man or a woman can uh, uh, get this or rewrite his uh, subconscious mind okay 